Ladies and gentlemen, I just became an official citizen of Gabon. <laughs> Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are new, I am Wangil Zalalam. Welcome. So today's segment is going to be What's Up Africa? Stay tuned. The rapper Ludacris is officially African. Ludacris announced on his Instagram that he became an official citizen of Gabon. Ladies and gentlemen, I just became an official citizen of Gabon, of Africa. I am a loyal citizen of Zamunda. I mean Gabon. This is the greatest day of my life. My life. And Wakanda. All of that. Ludacris' wife, Udix. I hope that's how you pronounce it, <laughs> is Gabonese. Ludacris is a rapper and actor who has won Critics' Choice, MTV, and three Grammy Awards. The rapper is also the founder of his own record level. First of all, I would like to say welcome, Ludacris, to our beautiful continent and hope you contribute the best way you can to Gabon and Africa. He looks and sounds very happy to be an African Gabonese and I like how his whole family jumped on board and now all of them are Gabonese. We are also seeing other celebrities claiming their heritage, being excited about Africa and visiting Africa like 2019 Steve Harvey visited uh, from Real Housewives, uh, Cynthia Belli, Chorus Boris, that bold I think it's Boris Kujo. Boris Kujo, his wife Nicole, a lot of uh, black American celebrities um, are coming back, are showing interest in seeing what is here in Africa and wanting to know where, he, where they came from. As I said, more celebrities are showing interest in coming to Africa, especially Ghana. They have been visiting 2019 a whole lot. Since we're on the topic of Ghana, let's talk about Ghana's The Year of Return. In September 2018, Ghana's president Nana Akufo Addo declared 2019 as the year of return in order to commemorate the 400th anniversary of the arrival of African slaves in America. The art they made so beautiful. Look at this. The year of return made such an impact that black American, African from all over the world went to Ghana to visit. I get why this was successful. It's because it taps into people's emotions. Wherever they were, maybe they felt un unwanted, didn't feel like they fit anywhere. And now Ghana is here with open arms saying, come, return home, my lost children. Of course it's going to resonate with people. I believe this is going to be a great thing for our lost brothers and sisters that were taken from us and were raised in a different environment where they felt like they don't belong and now they can return they can come home they can come to africa the continent the motherland and see how other people look like them there are millions of us that look alike so i think they really succeeded on that part the second incredible thing to come from this is economical growth ghana have seen a lot of tourists because of this year of return so um those, those people coming in are paying for taxis, paying for hotels, paying for food, paying to buy those traditional clothes. So that is money. That equates to the economical growth. So this will improve the economy tremendously. And this is something to be happy about. I was actually hoping other African countries can implement what Ghana has done, but I've already heard stories that um, Nigeria is trying to do the same thing, Uganda is trying to say the same thing. Um, I'll put the Twitter feed on the screen for you to see. It was a bit funny but it's nice. It's okay if we're taking the positives. Imitation is the best way of flattery so let's all follow. On another news, Ethiopia launched its first satellite into space. The launch of the remote sensing satellite took place at a space station in China. This achievement for our country happened in 2019, end of December, like three weeks ago. The launch makes Ethiopia the 11th African country to put a satellite into space. Egypt was the first in 1998. The data of the satellite is expected to paint a fuller picture of the country's agriculture, forestry, and mining resources and improve responses to flooding and other disasters. What a great news. 
it's truly an achievement for Ethiopia. Not to mention the amount of benefits this satellite will bring to the agriculture, forestry improvement of responses to disasters. The benefits are a lot, but the one benefit that I truly am loving is the fact that we can have a view of our natural resources. Up until this point, all the information we have on our resources is from other nations' satellites and us getting that information. So now we get, we get to see the raw data of what is there, what is not there, where is it located, so that we can prove our country and the lives that are in it. The other news I am bringing to you now is uh, not so fun. Zimbabwe's vice president, wife Mary, is accused of trying to murder her husband. Yikes. Mm -hmm. The charges against Mary Mubua, who is the wife of Vice President Constantino Chwenga, arose from a trip last year when she traveled to South Africa with her husband who went there to seek medical attention. Allegedly, she took her husband to a hotel refusing to take him to hospital until people forced the door open and took him to hospital. It is also alleged that she went to his hospital ward and asked his security to leave, saying she wanted to have a private conversation with her husband and removed an intravenous line, a catheter from her husband, causing him to bleed. Prosecutors are also saying in 2018, Mary bought a house and two luxury cars in South Africa by lying that she transferred the money for paying for goods to be imported. She has been in jail for three weeks, so now she is suing her husband for not allowing her to see her children and is not being able to enter their house. This story sounds like a drama from a TV. Or Kana. For those of you who are in Ethiopia, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Kana soap opera. One of those Turkish movies. That's, that's what it sounds like to me. Like, wow. I don't know if her husband cheated on her. After he was taking a shower, he dropped the towel on the floor and she got mad. I don't know. All I know is from the prosecutor's claim, she wanted that man dead. And it looks like she was preparing for a way out by buying a house in SA in South Africa. But she is still innocent until proven guilty. So guys, let's not be quick to judge. But you guys, be honest. Do you think she did it? Did she try and kill her husband? Let me know in the comment section below if you do or not. Let's just have a conversation about it. As always, thank you for watching my video. I highly appreciate it. I'll see you on the next one. And this video is my first video up for 2020. Is it though? Is it? I think. Have a productive 2020. Bye.